We're here on the Max Super Retriever Series. We have spent a lot of time in the duck hunting capital of the world. That would be your Stuttgart, Arkansas. So it's only fair we come down and have some competition here in the goose hunting capital of the world. Welcome to El Campo, Texas, southwest of Houston, here on the Gulf Coast. And Justin Packett, we always look for a true-to-life hunting experience to test these dogs. This is goose hunting as true to life as it gets down here. It can't get any more real than this. I mean, the bird boys are fighting water moccasins. The bullfrogs in the pond out there this big. It's 90 degrees. It's been a gut check all week. It's going to continue today. It's hot and humid. This is Gulf Coast hunting, but this is the real is deal. Yes, sir. We'll have the first of our flights of our semi-final competition. Also coming up, the best dogs, the best jumping dogs in the world in our big air competition, including the world record holder and current great outdoor games champion, Little Morgan. It's all coming up. Let's get started. Pearl of the Prairie, that's what the community of El Campo calls itself. We've been to the Gulf Coast before, down to New Orleans with Max Super Retriever Series, but this is our first time here to Goose Country. It is a totally different look down here. There's Justin Taggart helping out with the action there. The qualifying, 65 teams going through two days of very, very difficult conditions. Temperatures up in the 90 degree range. This will be a test of survival. Again, we're trying to get down to five dog and handler teams for our final. In our semi-final, the top part of the brackets today, Joe and Britt, Ryle, Jack and Richard Crippen, Jerry Day and Nike, and Bill Autry, this time with Rue. Right now, let's get out to the course. Take a look at our sport dog virtual course. It's a true-to-life Gulf Coast hunting scenario. Lots of decoys, three layout blinds, two Bubba Gunners, the handler's in the middle. All three have shotguns, all are banging away. First mark comes out at 150 yards. The dog's gonna need to sit tight Watch that gun barrel. Mark II comes out to the left at 175. The dogs are going to be looking to get in the water. This mark is on the outside, just as the third mark is at 190. Skirt that water. Sit tight now. After all those long marks, here comes a short one right in your face at five yards. All three guns banging. Got to sit tight on this one. Look for a break or two. Pick up those four. Line up. Big monster blind at 320 yards. Through the old falls. Let's see who can pick this thing up. Coming up first, it's Britt Ryle from Camden, Tennessee. The dog is Joe. Britt has been a dog trainer for 25 years. They took a cumulative score through the first two days of competition. This team had a score of 73 to make the semifinals. And there are those layout blinds you referred to, Justin. <laughs> Choppy, when they open up those blinds, he's got to get him in there tight. Got to get next to that Avery finisher where he can really get a read on what's going on. It's tough to follow that gun barrel when you're four or five feet away. Now you heal. I don't think he's seen the first two. Maybe saw Mark three. Number four is in his face. He's going to see that You're one. going to see that and got to watch that one. If he breaks, he's gone. He's had tight, did a nice job. All right, one of the four down. We're looking for the fewest number of faults. That's the way you're going to advance in the competition here. We'll talk about what those faults are composed of. We have major ones and minor ones. We'll explain those for you as we go through the retrieves. No. Basically, every time you hear a whistle, that's a couple of faults. Two fault deduction on the whistle. Look for some of the major penalties like breaking in and out of the area of the fall, and that's the area that's right around the mark. The judges are looking for the handler and the, and the dog to make it to the area of the fall on their own, without cast, without whistles. I don't think Joe has a real good idea where this was. If you'll remember, he wasn't real close to Britt when he was swinging that shotgun. He never really got a, a clean picture on where those marks were falling. For me. Britt Ryle is a professional dog trainer, has been for 25 years. Been around the game a long time. Doing a good job uh, trying to get Joe on these marks and uh, just survive. You just got to survive and try to get to the next uh, series. As uh, flat as it is, you wouldn't think there'd be some visibility issues out there, but there most definitely are. 20 faults at this point. But consider, we've only picked up that number four bird, oh. that breaking bird so far. we still got three more to retrieve, plus a blind. Tough, tough situation. And I can tell you, with the crowd right behind them, the cameras, this is not going to be the first visibility trouble that we have. We should see this throughout the competition. Got that one done. Still two more marks to go. The two toughest marks. Joe! As Justin mentioned, it did not appear that Joe had marked either one of these two. Yeah, big right-hand bird here. Let's drive him back. 
He's kind of going back into the old fall there. And when you don't mark them, when the, when the dog does not see them, you're going to see a bunch of handling. What? And this what? is the first of our semi-final series of retrieves here. 12 dog and handler teams trying to make the cut to five to go in the finals. Needs a big over here. Got it. Nice cast. Well, the conditions are tough. I mean, it's it's just so hot, so humid. It, it, it feels a lot like two-a-day football practices out here, Tommy. And we're actually getting a break today. The temperatures are not as high as they were those first two qualifying days. So yeah. if you've made it this far, maybe you're the yeah. strongest. Yeah, if you made it this far, you had to have a dog that liked to retrieve more than eat. Yo! It's been a total, total gut check. Big left-hand bird, another handle. Those dogs just are not seeing these birds. The difficulty of the course has really stepped up in the semifinal round. Remember, this team had a combined two-day total of 73 faults before they got to the semifinal round. A little over here, you should pick it up. Not much wind, not much wind out there. It, it's really tough. What? Dig it out, Joe, that a boy. Big blind, and he's done. 320 yards, get ready for what? this one. Nice initial line, got to pull him back into those areas of the fall. It, it's a real tough situation. If you let the dog get too close to those old falls on this blind, they can suck back into that old scent. Yet keeping him off of that costs you a lot in terms of whistles. Exactly. Drive, Joe, drive. Bam. See how that run shakes out. Good job on that long blind and 84 faults. They can only sit and watch as the 11 other dog and handler teams have added Jack. Richard Crippen, when we return, also our very first Ducks Unlimited Big Air competition of the year gets underway. That's right after this. The Max Super Retriever Series is brought to you by Max Prairie Wings, America's premier waterfowl outfitter. Sport dog brand, dog training gear the way you design it. And by Yukonuba, what healthy dogs are made of. For 100 years or more, waterfowlers have laid in fields just like this. Here on the Texas Gulf Coast, this is an everyday occurrence in the middle of duck season. In the mud, in the cold, in the ice, in the snow. Probably not the snow here in South Texas, but in nasty stuff. With the advent of these blinds, it makes the waterfowl hunting easy. You get in the blind, but there's one big problem. Where do you put the dog? It takes a lot of training to get to this point. These handlers weren't told they'd be using a blind like this. So, there's two places they can put their dog. One of them's on the outside, the other one's inside. Place. After the dog's been trained to get in and out of this blind, they're gonna be a lot more steady. Use the word place, you can get your dog in and out real easy. It just takes a little time. But these handlers don't know that. They didn't know that until 10 minutes ago when they got here. Once these blinds start popping open and the guns start just going crazy, who knows what's gonna happen. We'll round everybody up. We're ready for the second retrieve of the semi-final round. Britt Ryle and Joe with 84 faults watching, seeing if they're going to make it. The final five who will be in the finals. Here's the next team of hopefuls, another Tennessee team. This is Richard Crippen. The dog is Jack. Jack is either the most incredible retriever you've ever seen or the worst. I mean, he has no in-between. He's either wide open and perfect or he falls apart. No in-between. Depends on the day. Well, we'll see what kind of day it's going to be for this team right here. Again, the layout blind, as you mentioned before in the previous Set. retrieve, Justin, so important to keep the dog tight to the blind so he can follow that gun barrel. See if he sits tight Take here. Him, boys. Sit. Sit tight, Jack. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit. You cannot mark off Set. the gun barrel if you're four feet in front of it, Jack. Sit. Hadn't seen the first two. Sit. Nor the third. Four marked birds Sit. coming out. We'll have a blind after that, Sit. a long blind, 320 yards. There's a breaking bird. He almost fair caught that one. I was looking for the hand to wave. He was going to catch it. Get no points for that. Well, in fact, you get a lot of points if you fair catch that one. So they're over that initial hurdle. You know, he's so wound up, he didn't even mark the five-yard bird. Okay, essentially what he has here is four more blinds. I don't think he saw a thing. This team with a cumulative score over the first two qualifying days of 70 points. 
They were in great shape coming in here. Let's see if they can just hold it together. This is where the handler comes in. This is where the handler either makes it or breaks it. He's got to get that dog to understand what he's asking him to do. Again, the dog has no visual memory of seeing any of those birds come out, so this is going to be a tough row to go for this team. Come on, Jack, hang in there. Got to give him that cast. Every whistle, two faults, and they're starting to pile up. This is what we refer to as self-employed. <laughs> Jack's going to do his own thing. He never marked the birds. The, the short bird just wiped him out. Uh, he did not mark, well, he marked the first bird, but he never turned his head for the second or third birds. And I saw that, I knew I was going to end up basically with, with uh, three blinds or four blinds. So uh, knowing that going in, I kind of, he looked like he was going to take the middle bird. However, he broke down and uh, tried to handle him, figuring he might handle him, but he got in his head that he wanted to do his own thing. And some days the, the dog is going to outshine anything out there. And other days he's getting his mind that uh, he's going to do what he wants to do. And you can train, 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 but it, you never know. Tough situation for these two. Well, you called it either an all day or a nothing day. This looks like it's going to be one of those nothing days, and Jack will be picked up. They're not going to record a score. And here's your story right here. Yeah, I mean, it all starts at the line. If they're not going to sit and mark off a gun barrel, you're going to end up with four blinds. This graphic illustrates it perfectly. It's undoable at that point. Well, the 84 by Britt Ryle and Joe, still our best score so far. We will get back to the retriever course, but right now we are ready for the very first Ducks Unlimited Big Air competition for 2005. We've got a crowd that is in place. We have got a terrific field. We've got 12 contestants in the semifinals. They're shooting for the final six spots. And right now we're getting ready to take a look at some of the big guns we got here. Hey, we got that one right there. That's Brett Olson and Raider. And also the world champions, the great outdoor game champions, Little Morgan and Mike Jackson in this strong field today. And we got a strong win behind the backs of the competitors. Big win. I'm looking for a win-aided world record today. It's going to be fun. Stonewall, Louisiana. This is Neil Henderson. The dog is Maggie. Each year, we seem to have more dogs jumping further with every competition. This guy has a super, super unique toss. Check this out. Bang! The bounce. Pretty neat stuff. I've never seen that before. And the bounce pass does seem to work for Maggie right here. Look at this. How about this for the opening jump? First out of the gate, 17 feet and 3 inches. Pretty nice jump for a big woman, too. Maggie is Maggie's a hefty girl. A lot of speed, a lot of drive, and a lot of height on that one, and that is the key. Put those three elements together, and you and get yourself a good jump. Mike McWilliams and Coco coming up next. Their longest qualifying jump. Check it out. Almost 20 feet. Bro Bridge, Louisiana, Doug Dog. Nice work. Pretty good jump. Nice toss. Good all the way around. I think he gave up a little bit on the paw cam. Look real close. Gave up about 30 inches there. Could have been a 20 plus jump right there. Easily still 18 feet, 11 inches. Good enough to take the lead. Mike McWilliams and Coco. We've just had two teams go so far. We got the big guns yet to come in this competition. Now you got to have drive forward. You got to have drive upward. And how about this? Coco has the total package. She can drive down as well. Check it out. Back home, she is known as the Jacques Cousteau of the Labrador Retriever breed. Max Super Retriever Series and a tip of the hat to the Silver Spoon Land and Cattle Company. They have provided us a great spot to hold our competition today here in El Campo. A couple of the legends of this game certainly approaching the line right now. Jerry Day and Nike. The crowd is ready. We are in the semi-final round shooting for five spots in the finals. And everybody expects a lot from Jerry and Nike. Four dog virtual course shakes out like this. You've got three really long marks. One in your face and a great big nasty blind at 320 yards. Got to sit tight. Sit. Nike, here, watch. Super Sue says just do it, otherwise known as Nike. Incredible marking dog. Not super well known for her line manners, though. Heel. She's having a good time. Heel. 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 Nike, of course, the daughter of the legendary Super Sue. Lean Mac and Super Sue, probably the most famous Labrador retriever breeding in history. Every puppy out of that litter became a champion. Take a quick look. Four marks in a blind. It's all real long. It's hot. It's nasty. It is, it's going to be rough and tough out there. I don't think she saw anything other than the first one. She was moving around pretty good. But she's a great lining dog, so maybe he can talk her into believing that those marks are out there. 
Again, we're looking for the fewest number of faults. We have large infractions. We have small infractions. Two and five point infractions. Best score so far, Britt Ryle and Joe with 84. That's the number to beat. He's going to run this thing just like a blind holder. Super tight. You, we've got a little light breeze coming right to left right now. A little bit, a little right over here, kind of an angle. Get her downwind, put her on the bird. There we go. Should be real close to it. Two down, two to go, and then the blind. Jerry Day from College Park, Georgia. Really speaks the language of these dogs. They seem to have their own way of communicating. He's good. He's very, very good. He knows exactly what he's doing. Right there. I had an idea of where the bird was, and I felt like that if I could get her to the fall area, that she's played with these rubber ducks enough that uh, you know that, that she'd find it. She uses her eyes quite a bit, and uh, I just wanted her to understand that that was the long bird, and and that was her cue right there. That means go long, retired, you know, just get gone and go straight. So far, this bird is turning out to be the speed bump for this team. Rough and tough scenario. You know, it's right on that water's edge, and dogs that are trained to this level, when they see water, they're trained to get in it, and this bird's not in the water. It's tough on them. Hover! You know, you, you got to question this scenario when you see dogs of this level that are having so much difficulty, and I believe it's it's just the heat and the humidity that, that are making things so difficult. When, when, Nike. when you're really concentrating on getting air and staying cool, it's hard to really focus on what the handler's asking you to do. Well, I, I tell you what, though, she just did not want to believe me right down there. <laughs> Little stinker. <laughs> Jerry in his commentary. Well, you break down the birds, one it's not bird hard to see it, which one man. is the big problem so far. That mark right number there. two. 79 points. Back. If you'll notice, he sent her on back. That's the cue for the dog to run straight, be ready to, to be handled. The score of 94 may seem oh. high, but remember, this may be a war of attrition here. Just surviving to the final round may be enough regardless of the number of faults. And this is a test of survival. I mean, with these heat, the heat and humidity, uh, it, it's rough and tough Bye. out there, I'm telling you. A 320-yard blind does not help matters either. Big oh. right back here. Get there, Nike. With visibility oh. being difficult with the crowd right behind him. Nice cast. Jerry uses his hat to, to really accentuate that. that cast. Tried to overdo it. Tried to just bang that thing. I should not have given that last cast. Should have just let it roll right in there. Well, they got the blind. They got through it. 112 points, though, for Jerry Day and Nike. But do not count them out yet. Two more teams left to go in the semifinal round, and we're ready to continue with our Ducks Unlimited Big Air competition. So far, the leader is going to be Mike McWilliams and his dog, Coco. Take a look at this jump in round one, 18 feet and 11 inches, plus they gave up a couple of feet there on the deck. So look out for this team. These guys better get it while they can because little Morgan's on the way. This is another Morgan, not, not the Morgan world record holder, but a strong, strong jumper. The wind's still behind them. If they can get a good takeoff right on the end of the dock, get some height, a lot of speed, look for a big jump. Here we go. Oh, too low, way too low. Got to get some height. A little bit flat for this team of Chris Winter and Morgan, but good work on the end of that dock there. Got to get some elevation. Everything else was perfect. Just got to get some elevation. As flat as that jump was, it was exceptionally long. 18 feet and 2 inches. Chris Winter and Morgan are moving into second place with that one. Here's the come and breed in big air competition. This is the German short hair. We see more of these every year, and they seem to jump higher every time as well. These dogs have huge elevation. You see them kind of break down a little bit on the dock. Wow. Nice elevation. They just got to get some speed. We need some speed out of these dogs. I know they can run faster than this. That was not a bad toss, but it did have one drawback. It wasn't far enough. It was right out in front of the dog's face for the entirety of the jump. But if he could have had it out there a little bit farther, that dog might have gone farther. But 18-10. Man, that moves into second place for Mike Bracken and Sabine. So the competition is super tight here in El Campo. Mike McWilliams and Coco with the lead 18-11. We got another super team coming to the line. Don't go away. Retriever Series is brought to you by 
Max Prairie Wings, America's premier waterfowl outfitter, and by these fine sponsors. One more team left to go in our semi-final round, Max Super Retriever Series, El Campo, Texas. Here in Goose Country, you can see it right there. Bill Autry, not here with Cody this time. He's here with one of Cody's descendants. This is Rue. Big chocolate dog, about 90-plus pounds, grand champion. Two years old, Set. youngest dog in the field left. Set. Saw the first one. Saw the second, I believe. Set. Come on, third, long right-hand bird. Where are you? Set. Didn't see it. Set. In your face. Good job from the hunting dog. Staying steady. This thing's going to be won and lost at the line. He did a nice job. Four marked birds and one blind. Exceptional length, 320 yards when they get all the marked birds picked up. Ooh, he got lucky there. Went right back to an old fall. The judges just hit him with a two-fall deduction, though. Well, I think he'd be another, Cody. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think he can. You know, I, I think he's the youngest dog here in the 12. But uh, he's coming. He's going to be not. He needs experience. Especially at this game. Rue, the son of Cody, that big driving dog, one of the winningest of all time. And Bill thinks a lot of Rue. Outstanding dog. Let's see what happens here. We're going to really check Rue's ability to mark. Going right back to the old fall again. Boy, he is really <laughs> fortunate. The judges are being good to him. And you know what? That's the breaks of the game. Um, sometimes it's way, well, all the time, it's better to be lucky than good. Absolutely. 11 faults so far. Again, we're looking for the fewest number of faults. Best score so far, an 84 by Britt Ryle and Joe. Long right-hand bird. Let's see if he can dig it out. He's right there in the area. Burn up a few points getting there. Now this, lo this blind is going to be probably longer than, than what Ruse run Maybe ever. I don't know if he's done it in training, but this is a long way for a hunting dog. Excellent score so far. They're definitely ahead of the game at this point. He's going back to those old falls. He's really kind of caving to the suction of everything that's happened over on the right side. He's got to get him left. A little scallop there. Got to get him over. Got to get him over here. He's way left. I think he wins it. Bam, 71. I'm, I'm really surprised. I did not think he would make it through this, this test. Yeah. Tough conditions, yeah. hot temperatures, and the hot score so far. Bill Autry and Rue, that's 71, has him on top of the leaderboard. That completes flight one of our semifinal competition. We'll have flight two for you when we return to El Campo, Texas, with some new faces, some former champions as well. We'll also have plenty more big air dog competitions and big names on the way when we see you next time from here in El Campo on Max Super Retriever Series.